Lesson 4.4, multiply decimals by whole numbers using expanded form. We have several links in the description to help you if you need them. We can use expanded form and place value to multiply a decimal by a whole number. We use expanded form to draw an area model and add the partial products. We can multiply decimal factors as if they were whole numbers, then use place value to insert the decimal point into the product. We learned to multiply using area models in fourth grade math, lesson 3.3. We can use an area model to multiply a decimal by a whole number. So if we were only multiplying whole numbers, we have 8 times 16. We can put the factor 8 here, and we can break the 16 into a 10 plus 6. We do 8 times 10, which is 80, and 8 times 6, which is 48. We add the partial products, and we get 128. We do the same thing for a whole number and a decimal. We have our factor 8 here. We're multiplying it by 1 and 6 tenths. We break apart the 1 and 6 tenths as a 1 here and a 6 tenths here. 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 times 6 tenths is 48 tenths that we can regroup to 4 and 8 tenths. We add them together and get 12 and 8 tenths. Let's try comparing them one more time. Here we have only whole numbers. We have 17 times 35. We break the 17 apart into a 10 plus a 7. We break the 35 apart into a 30 plus a 5. And we multiply 10 times 30, which is 300. We multiply 10 times 5, which is 50. We multiply 7 times 30, which is 210, and 7 times 5, which is 35. We add all the partial products and get 595. If we were multiplying a whole number and a decimal, here we have 17 times 3 and 5 tenths. So do you notice the only thing different here is that there's a decimal point here. This is 35 whole, this is 3 and 5 tenths. We break apart the 17 into a 10 plus a 7. We break apart the decimal as a 3 plus a 5 tenths. We multiply 10 times 3, which is 30. 10 times 5 tenths, which is 5. 7 times 3, which is 21. And 7 times 5 tenths, which is 35 tenths, that we regroup as 3 and 5 tenths. We add all the partial products and get 59 and 5 tenths. And if you look, they have the same numbers in the factors and the product. The only difference is there's no decimal point here. And in this factor, we have one decimal place value hop. And in the product, there's one decimal place value hop. Here we have 14 times 2 and 8 tenths. We can separate each place value. We have a 10 plus a 4. And we multiply it by a 2 plus an 8 tenths. We make our area model. We have 10 plus 4. And we're multiplying it by 2 plus 8 tenths. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 8 tenths is 8. We move the decimal place over one place to the right because we're multiplying it by 10. It's a power of 10. We have 4 times 2, which is 8. 4 times 8 tenths is 32 tenths that we can regroup as 3 and 2 tenths. And we can see each partial product here inside this area model. We add all the partial products and we get 39 and 2 tenths. We could estimate this as 14 times 3. The 8 would tell the 2 to go up to a 3, and 14 times 3 is equal to 42, which is very close to what we got as 39 and 2 tenths, so our answer, our product, is reasonable. Using an area model is related to using the distributive property because we break apart factors. We have 9 times 6 and 7 tenths. We multiply 9 times 6 plus 7 tenths. Just like the mother bird who distributes food to her babies in the nest, the 9 is distributed to the 6, so we have 9 times 6, and 9 times 7 tenths. 9 times 6 is equal to 54, and 9 times 7 tenths is equal to 63 tenths that we regroup as 6 and 3 tenths. 
when we use the area model, we have 9 times 6, which is 54, and 9 times 7 tenths, which is 6 and 3 tenths. Do you see how they're related? They both use the partial products. It's equal to 60 and 3 tenths. We add the partial products, and we have our product. In an area model, one factor is arranged vertically, and the other factor is arranged horizontally. We have 12 times 3 and 14 hundredths. Our 12 is a 10 plus 2, and our 3 and 14 hundredths is the 3 whole right here, and our 14 hundredths here. 10 times 3 is equal to 30. 10 times 14 hundredths. We move the decimal point one place to the right because we're multiplying it by 10, so we have 1 and 4 tenths. 2 times 3 is equal to 6, and 2 times 14 hundredths is 28 hundredths. We add all these partial products, and we get 37 and 68 hundredths. So for adding partial products using an area model, here we have 234 times 1 and 6 tenths. We break each place value apart. We have 200 plus 30 plus 4. Up here, horizontally, we have our 1 plus 6 tenths. 200 times 1 is 200. 200 times 6 tenths is 120. 30 times 1 is 30, and 30 times 6 tenths is equal to 18. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 6 tenths is equal to 2 and 4 tenths. We add our partial products, and we get 374 and 4 tenths. If we were multiplying in the thousands place, we would have another box up here for the thousands. Here's what's happening with place value patterns when we multiply decimals. We have 47 and 2 tenths times 13. If we multiply 47 and 2 tenths times 10, it'll be 472. Then we can multiply it times 13 as if it were a whole number. We get 6,136. Then we can multiply it by 1 tenth to bring it back to 47 and 2 tenths. That means we can multiply 6,136 times 1 tenth to find the actual product as 613 and 6 tenths. So when we multiply the decimal numbers as if they were whole numbers, we can think of it as multiplying the decimal by 10 to convert it to a whole number, then multiplying it by 1 tenth to change it back. And that means we would multiply the product by 1 tenth to change it back to a decimal. Here we have 47 and 2 tenths, and we're multiplying it by 100, by 10, by 1, by 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth, and we can see what happens to the product. Multiplying a decimal by a power of 10, this would be 10 to the first power, this would be 10 to the second power as 10 times 10. When we multiply a decimal by a power of 10, it moves the decimal point to the right. Multiply a decimal by one tenth or one hundredth or one thousandth, we'll move the decimal point to the left. Here we have 4,720. If we only multiply it times 10, it will be 472. When we multiply it by one, it keeps its identity as 47 and 2 tenths. So do you see how the decimal point moved behind the two when we multiplied it by 10? And then when we multiplied it by 100, we had to put a zero as a placeholder? between the two and the decimal point. When we multiply it by a tenth, we now move the decimal point in between the four and the seven. When we move, multiply it by a one hundredth, it comes to the left of the four. If we multiply it by a thousandth, we have to put a zero as a placeholder in the tenths place. Shirts cost thirty dollars at the store, and Bob pays only eight tenths of the price because his mother works at the store and she can use her employee discount. Sarah bought one using a coupon for $5 off. Who will pay more for a shirt? So we think we can multiply $30 by 8 tenths to find the price that Bob paid. 
and we can subtract $30 minus $5 to find the price that Sarah paid. We have $30 times 8 tenths, 8 times 0 is 0, 8 times 3 is 24, we write it here, 0 times 0 is 0, and 0 times 3 is 0, we add them up and we get 24, a decimal point, and a 0, and we know that we can put another 0 as, as a trailing 0 for the $24, but we know this is $24. There's one decimal hop in this problem for the factors, so there's going to be one down here for the product. And Sarah is $30 minus $5, that's $25. And we compare them, and we see that Sarah paid $1 more. So we had to multiply to find Bob's amount, and we had to subtract to find Sarah's amount. One Mars day is about 1 in 28,000th Earth days. About how many Mars days would equal 2 Earth weeks? So think, 2 weeks, that would be 14 days, we can multiply 1 and 28 thousandths by 14 days. We start with the 4, 4 times 8 is equal to 32. We regroup the 3, write down the 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is a 1, and 4 times 1 is 4. Now, we erase the regrouping so we don't confuse them when we go to multiply the tens place down here. 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 1 is 1. We add them. We drop down the 2. 8 and 1 is 9. 2 and 1 is 3. We drop down the 4, and we drop down our 1. And then we count how many decimal place hops there are in all of the factors. The 14 doesn't have any because it's a whole number. And we can count from the right side one, two, three hops to get to this decimal point. So that means we're going to do one, two, three hops for our product. Our product is 14 and 392 thousandths. And that would be days, wouldn't it? That would be the Mars days to be two Earth weeks. An object that weighs one pound on Earth will weigh 165 thousandths pounds on the Moon because the Moon has a lower gravitational pull than Earth. How much would a 10-pound bag of potatoes weigh on the Moon? So think, well, we can multiply 165 thousandths by 10 to solve it. And because we're multiplying by 10, our answer will be greater than 165 thousandths. And we can move the decimal point one place to the right to solve this. We're multiplying it by a power of 10. We can just move that decimal place from in between this 0 and 1 to in between the 1 and 6. We're going to get 1 and 65 hundredths. That would be pounds, wouldn't it? We've got to label our answer. So a 10-pound bag of potatoes on Earth would only weigh 1 and 65 hundredths of a pound on the moon. You can multiply your weight, whatever it is, times 165 thousandths to see how much you would weigh on the moon. And remember, you can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column as you multiply. Make sure as you break apart your numbers, you break apart them correctly by place value. In our next lesson, 17.5, we're going to be solving some word problems about multiplication and money using a strategy of draw a diagram. I hope I'll see you there. Hit the like button for me, and remember there's links in the description to help you. Bye!